So is Israel viewed differently in traditional media versus digital social media? And if yes, why do you think that is? I think that, uh, first of all, I think that social media presents a real challenge to Israel. And in that sense, I think David was right in responding to this challenge. And why, while I don't agree with his views, I guess, but I respect the work he did as a professional as responding to this challenge. I think that the internet changed the game for Israel. Israel was able to control the media coverage from the Middle East pretty efficiently. The press corps set in Jerusalem. By the way, the Tel Aviv press set in Tel Aviv, the Hebrew press. The international press set in Jerusalem with the government offices. And they were most of the time fed from the hand of the government, which is the easiest thing for journalists to do. If I got a source in the prime minister office, I wouldn't go to a Palestinian village to, to see if some guy's having trouble, you know, reaching his field. It's hot and it's boring uh, compared to speaking to the chief of staff. So Israel was very efficient except for one crisis point, which it was the first intifada. The Lebanon war was like ancient history for that. But the first intifada, Israel was unprepared. After that, Israel was able to control the stories coming out. And ex an example is the New York Times correspondent, which sits in Jerusalem for how, 20 years now, has a son in the army, in the Israeli army, and is embedded in the Jewish life in Israel for better and for worse. So what we have now is a new form of new idea of how information comes out of the field. And some of the filters are gone. And I'll give you an example from the New York Times again. I have a fellow blogger called Joseph Dana who writes a lot about uh, protests in Jerusalem against house demolition in Silwan, which is a Jerusalem neighborhood where Israel evacuates Palestinians to make way for settlers. And there was a big story there about a month ago and the New York Times blog actually referred its readers to our bloggers Twitter they said you want to know what's going on tune in to, his, to this guy's Twitter account he's there and the New York Times correspondent wasn't there so this is it sounds very small but this is a revolution in journalism the fact that you can access Twitter account of someone who actually sees the people led, you know, sees the settlers, see, sees everything there, makes it hard to control the image. And I'm sure, because I believe that the occupation is a morally wrong thing, I'm sure that presenting a story from the ground, unfiltered, will create a bigger challenge for Israel in the years to come. I think Noam is giving the Israeli government um, a lot of compliments by saying that we succeed to control the media. I wish it was like that. It's not like that. Um, as someone who was the contact person for the foreign media between the, based in Jerusalem, between the years 2002-2005. I was the deputy spokesperson of the foreign ministry and I was dealing with the foreign correspondent uh, who were based in Jerusalem. Mo in most cases, in most cases, what we, the Israeli officials, used to tell them, they said, okay, fine, but at the end of the day, they used to write whatever they found, uh, what they found uh, interesting. Um, at the same time, new media is a challenge. Social media is a challenge a, a, a for, for a government, for any government. And I see it as an opportunity for the Israeli government, for, for, for Israel's image, let's put it like that. The mainstream media will 
report or will bring the news from a very narrow perspective. Usually it's related to the conflict. Usually it's related to conflict uh, uh, issues. And I can understand, I can understand why they were sent the foreign correspondent, the 400 foreign correspondent who are based in Jerusalem or in Israel, they were sent in order to cover the conflict. But this is something which does uh, injustice for, for Israel. And the reason for that is because Israel, yes, it's true there is a conflict there, but Israel is much more than a conflict. I mean, it's, it's, it's a society. It's a, 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 a society which has a lot to offer. There are people who are living there. A, there is a lot of creativity a, which is happening there when it comes to a health, when it comes to medicine, when it comes to culture, when it comes to fashion, to lifestyle, and so on and so forth. But the journalists are covering Israel only through this narrow prisma of a, the conflict. And all of a sudden, by <coughs> having a media outlet in our hands, by having this possibility to show or to bring more information about Israel through new channels, I think this is the, 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 the main importance of new media and social media for us as a government, that all of a sudden we can, we can bring more channels or more topics to the knowledge of people in the world. And it's not only about conflict, it's also about other issues. So that's why I see it su such an important tool for us. Would you like to respond or should I go no, to the next No, let's move on.